As, uh, as you'll mention, I'm actually Danish, but I'll, I'll take the liberty of doing this in English because uh, otherwise, as you know, we Danes, although part of the Scandinavian Brotherhood, we tend to swallow half the words. And, and if I do it in, 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 in Danish, I'm sure you only get half the presentation. Anyway, moving on, uh, I've been asked today to talk about opportunities for investors in the energy markets of tomorrow. And, uh, and happily doing that, uh, although uh, in line with the theme of the conference here today, I will be focusing on opportunities within clean energy. So I will not be boring you with Canadian oil sands or with the water boom in, uh, in Greenland. But moving on, firstly though, the required disclaimer, and I will assume that you have all read and understood this slide about now. A couple of words first on, um, on the fund I, I represent. You mentioned briefly that uh, our fund is called Climate Change Capital Private Equity. It is. It's a 200 million euros, so around 1.5 billion NOC, private equity fund for investment in companies within the sectors of energy technologies, waste and water. The subsectors that we focus on uh, within clean energy are, are here on the right. So it's clean power, that's mostly the renewables, but also other uh, uses of, of, of uh, cleaner fossil fuels. It's clean transport, so essentially biofuels, electric vehicles, uh, energy efficiency, representing a broad group of companies, anything from really smart grids to uh, buildings, energy improvements. We also invest in the, in the waste and the water sectors. Uh, we focus on expansion capital and buyout investments and, uh, and focus on later stage companies. So the companies we invest in uh, will have to have proven technologies and, uh, and most of them also have established commercial revenues. Our investors, uh, so the investors that backed our fund, uh, are among some of, the, uh, some of the largest European banks and, and pension funds, including HSBC and, uh, and Albinvest, the private equity part of, uh, of two very large Dutch pension funds. And so far, uh, we've made 10 investments throughout Europe. These are all shown here. Uh, and these include uh, 10 companies with uh, very different in terms of technologies and product applications. Um, some are companies with a strong technology angle, like for instance, the company called Nigeria, the company called Inexis, whereas others are very basic services companies with no IP at all. Uh, and those include, for instance, Climate Energy and, uh, and Enercos. The common theme though for all our investments is that we try to back the best uh, management teams that, uh, that we can find, and we, uh, and we focus obviously on, the, on clean energy technologies as well. We are large of a part of group, and just two seconds on that. Our group is called Climate Change Capital, and it is, uh, it is an asset manager uh, focused on some of the opportunities created by, by a transition to a low carbon economy. We manage uh, a range of different fund strategies, uh, carbon finance, uh, energy infrastructure, even property, and then private equity, the fund that I'm with. Uh, all in all, that comes to a little more than a billion euros. Uh, headquartered in London uh, and have uh, offices in, uh, in China and the US. One of our founders, who's also actually the, uh, the vice chairman of, of Climate Change Capital, uh, he founded it back in 2003, is also one of the authors of the, uh, of the Kyoto Protocol. He advised what's called the, the Lower Island States, which is 48 island states throughout the world on the, on the Kyoto pr Protocol and the negotiations. So he was actually one of the authors of, of, of that and still very, very active in, um, in this space throughout the world. Now moving on to the topic for the presentation, the opportunities for investors in the energy market. Again, focusing on the opportunities within clean energy. What I'll do is actually take you straight through the con uh, conclusion to the presentation. And then later on, describe in some detail the, the basis for the conclusion including uh, having a look at uh, the current trends in the energy markets, uh, trends within investment in clean energy. Uh, I'll look at some of the perspectives in terms of, of the size of the clean energy sector, a couple of interesting comparisons, but also talk about the, the different subsectors within clean energy and what, uh, what we're currently focusing on and what our, uh, our perspective on these subsectors mean to our uh, investment decisions. But firstly, as promised, uh, the conclusion. 
we believe uh, that uh, clean energy offers great opportunity for investors. Uh, we are fun focused on the on the space, so probably no surprise to you. Uh, that said, though, uh, we also believe that uh, some of the areas within clean energy are more attractive than others. Um, we uh, we like uh, energy efficiency. Uh, Paul mentioned it uh, a second ago in his presentation. Energy efficiency is is often the simplest and cheapest route to cost and carbon savings. Therefore, it's interesting. We also like the uh, the LED sector. Uh, LEDs are expected to, um, to grow by a factor of 10 in the next five years. The reason being that uh, LEDs only represent about a 1% of the general lighting market. But LEDs have now reached a point where, in terms of lifetime and cost, it makes sense to replace uh, all lights with L LED lights for many applications. And therefore, some of the big, uh, big boys in the industry, G, Philips, Osram, and are focused on, on LEDs. That creates opportunities also for investors like ourselves. Offshore wind uh, will by 2020 be a $60 billion market. And uh, although we're not, uh, we don't have any ambitions of investing in wind turbine manufacturers because that's really, again, a big boys game. That's Siemens, uh, that's GE, that's Vestas, uh, big Chinese companies, not something that we as a fund can back. But the supply chain servicing offshore uh, is very interesting. We also uh, focus on smart grid opportunities and we also like distributed generation uh, because uh, these these segments are growing as um, power generation are moving closer to the point of use. Um, electric vehicles, we agree with the uh, with the uh, the prognosis, the forecast that Paul presented that electric vehicles will be a uh, will be a, a big market going forward. But again, it's, it's one for the incumbent car companies. It's not for private equity investors like ourselves. So it's one where, uh, where we're struggling slightly and, uh, and trying to stay away. Although looking at fuel efficiency opportunities, that's sort of more up our street. Lastly, as a, as a private equity investor, uh, the capital that we provide come with certain return requirements, not always, um, not always suitable for capital intensive businesses. So. Uh, rolling out big biofuels plants, uh, rolling out utility scale power generation is something that's best left to strategic investors, oil companies for instance, or big uh, utility companies. So that was the conclusion. Um, now let's see if I can convince you how we arrived there. Um, in order to, uh, in order to uh, have an opinion on what works for investors in the energy markets of tomorrow, it's probably worth having a look at at what the current trends in the energy markets are. This graph here shows um, from 2010 uh, forecast into 2030, the, the global primary energy consumption by terawatt hours. And please consider that's primary energy consumption. So that's every, every use of an energy source. It's not just power generation. And what's forecast uh, according to Bloomberg is that clean energy, mostly renewables, will increase its share of, of total primary energy consumption from 12.6% uh, in uh, 2010 to 5, uh, sorry, 15.7% in 2030. So that's sort of a, a mere three percentage point increase. It doesn't sound particularly transformational, uh, but consider that that actually involves that um, clean energy power generation capacity will grow by a factor of seven from today and until 2030. Uh, taking the, the installed capacity for, for clean energy power from currently below 400 gigawatts to 2,500 gigawatts by 2030. That's a massive growth and one of the reasons for why we think it uh, is an area that offers uh, great opportunities for investors. And this growth is, uh, is obviously dependent on, on massive investments going into, uh, into clean energy. So here's a, here's a brief look at what has happened and what is expected to happen in terms of annual clean energy investment. So back in 2004, $52 billion were invested in, in clean energy. And that's really everything within clean energy. That's the renewables, that's energy efficiency, uh, it's also waste and water. That was last year uh, $260 billion. So that's an average annual increase of 26% since 2004, that annual increase is obviously declining, sort of law of, of big numbers, 
but in 2020, that number is expected to grow to $470 billion and further on to around $550 billion a year invested in clean energy uh, by 2030. And that translates into, from today on and until 2030, $7 trillion invested in clean energy. Obviously, outstripping growth for any other energy source. Uh, and that's, that's sort of the, 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 the basis for our uh, excitement about clean energy as an opportunity for investors, because that's a lot of money to be invested uh, in a sector that, although getting bigger today, is, uh, is one where there's still opportunities to focus on, uh, on, uh, on exciting companies. This growth, we've been, uh, we've been talking about it this morning, uh, this growth is, is still driven uh, by sort of a four or five key factors. They're listed here. Um, they, they change in terms of the momentum uh, as we, uh, as we uh, go forward, but it's still driven by technology advances. Security of energy supply, uh, that's particularly important for China. I think it's by 2018, China is expected to be um, consuming as much oil as, uh, as the US. That's by 2018. By 2025, they're expected to consume double the oil of the US. And that's during a period where their own internal oil uh, supply will actually be stable. And that's why the Chinese government has decided that renewables must be a, uh, a focus for, uh, for uh, domestic investments. Resource depletion, we heard it uh, this morning from Ola. Regulato regulatory support, although sometimes volatile, it is still very important for the clean energy sector. And then there's the volatility in energy prices. Wind and solar uh, doesn't come at a price and, and therefore there's not much volatility. <coughs> but when looking at these, uh, these opportunities in clean energy, it's always, it's always interesting and useful to, to compare what is the size of the sector you're looking at um, up against uh, other uh, well-known sectors. So in, uh, in 2011, we had uh, $260 uh, billion dollars invested in clean energy, as mentioned. And, uh, and I'll take you through a couple of comparisons. And, and the first ones are not quite obvious, but hopefully interesting. So the earnings of Mexican drug cartels last year was around $40 billion. I'm not quite sure how they arrived at that number because I'm pretty sure they're not actually paying taxes on it or reporting it to anyone, but that's an estimate. But but the global video games market is, is still only a fifth the size of the clean energy market. Interesting. The clean energy market is even larger than the global luxury goods market. Still not up there with global advertising spend, but we'll get there someday, I'm sure. On to a couple of more relevant comparisons. Investments in fossil fuel-based power generation, that was in 2010, 219 billion. The number I have here for clean energy is 260 billion, but but the same number for 10 was 234 billion. So, so in 2010, and it will be the same in 11, uh, investments in clean energy actually surpassed investments in fossil fuel-based power generation. The total spent in the, uh, in the energy sector globally is 1.2 trillion, uh, of which uh, clean energy is, is now a significant part. And then there's oil. There's still a lot more money spent on oil. Something I understand is, is, is benefiting the country here. Uh, but, but clean energy will not get to $3.2 trillion spent in the, in the foreseeable, uh, foreseeable future, therefore still a very heavy reliance on, the, on fossil fuels. A quick look at the split uh, in size between the different uh, subsectors within clean energy. Uh, renewables, uh, wind, offshore wind and solar, will continue to, uh, to attract uh, the bulk of investments. Uh, by 2030, around $350 billion will be invested in, uh, in wind and solar uh, per year. So massive sectors, hence the interest of, of, of very big uh, industrial companies. The, uh, the increase in the, in the share of offsh offshore wind you see for 2020 is a result of the, of the European 2020 target and uh, several European governments are spending heavily on offshore wind uh, in the uh, leading up to, to, uh, to 2020. Uh, wind and solar are also benefiting from, from very strong growth outside Europe and North America, China notably, uh, India and also Middle East. When we look at investment opportunities in the clean energy markets, um, we apply uh, certain, certain selection criteria. And I've tried to give you a sense here of what we focus on as a, as a as a conservative, typical investor being approached with a business plan by an entrepreneur, 
Um, and and what we what we tend to to uh, rate important are uh, the size of the addressable market, obvious, competitive environment. Uh, these are companies selling into industries where you typically have incumbent players, and therefore often uh, also have uh, stiff competition. Capital intensity. I mentioned that uh, um, being a private equity investor um, is uh, is one that. Uh, doesn't allow you to, to invest too much in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in hardware, uh, so we focus on that as well. Uh, market adoption cycles, dependence upon subsidies, important, um, and, and one that's very difficult to, to manage as a risk factor, therefore we focus on it. And then business model flexibility. Reliance on IP protection is, is, is not something we rate highly, and that's a consequence of, of our focus in terms of, in terms of stage. We don't focus much on um, on, uh, on early stage opportunities where there's still much technology development ongoing. But coming back to the conclusion, um, I'm not going to take you through it again, but, but, but just reiterate that, uh, that we believe uh, that there are significant opportunities for investors in clean energy. Uh, we've been doing it since 2007 uh, with this fund, uh, and we continue to see uh, very impressive growth in the market. We continue to see more and more opportunities. We continue to see very good management teams coming into the sector prepared to take on the, uh, the incumbent technologies and, uh, and compete with, uh, with uh, traditional uh, and often fossil fuel-based uh, energy uh, production. Thank you. <laughs>